Okay, so page 119. We are in lesson E, writing. C, write a plan for a narrative paragraph about an emergency that happened that happened to you or someone you know. Answer the questions. So we're going to take some notes here. This will help us, uh, these notes will help us to write our narrative paragraph. Okay? So we have to answer these questions. Who is the paragraph about? Where did it happen? It would be the emergency, right? Our object. Where did it happen? When did it happen? What were the uh, the people doing when when uh, when the emergency started? This is a typo typographical area here. Or what were the people doing when it started? What was the emergency? How did the par how did the paragraph end? Now, once we have all that information, we can go ahead into, into uh, number two. Write a narrative paragraph about an emergency that happened to you or someone you know. Give the paragraph a title and write a concluding sentence. Use the information from exercise 1B and 1C to help you. Here's a tip. Here's some help. Some narrative paragraphs answer the questions who, what, when, where, why, and how. Okay? So let's take some time, pause the video, and write that narrative paragraph. Okay? We're going to answer the questions who, what, when, where, why and how. Alright, so let's do that and we'll come back and we'll continue on. Okay, so hopefully you had some time to write your narrative paragraph answering the questions who, what, when, where, why, and how. Okay, so number three, after you write, check your writing. So these are the things that we want to make sure um, that are done that we check yes for to make sure that we have a complete paragraph and that we've answered those questions correctly and completely. Number one, I gave my paragraph a title. Yes or no? Number two, I answered the questions who, what, when, where, why, and how. And number three, I wrote a concluding sentence. It means you summed everything up. Okay? Yes or no? Now, B, share your writings, your writing with a partner. Take turns. Read your par, par oh, sorry, read your paragraph to a partner. Number two, comment on your partner's paragraph. Ask your partner who, what, when, where, why, and how questions about the story. Tell your partner one thing you've learned. Okay? So that'll be a great um, exercise for our, uh, for our Zoom meetings or just your own personal groups. Okay? Excellent. Let's move on. We're going to jump into Unit 9. Uh, daily Living Lesson F. Another view. Life Skills Reading. We're going to look at a chart here, which is the best states rank, ranks best states ranks for public safety and pre-K through 12 education. The year is 2015. The categories are best states for public safety, low property crime rate, and low uh, violence crime rate, 
And another category would be best dates for pre-K through 12 education. Okay, so the best dates for public safety are, number one is Vermont, number two is Maine, number three is New Hampshire, number four is Idaho, number five is New Jersey, that one I don't believe. number six is Virginia, number seven is Connecticut with an asterisk. There's something here uh, that we need to know about. I don't it doesn't show me where um, what we need to know about this but when we see an asterisk here that usually means there's some more information about this that we need to know number eight is Wyoming number nine is Rhode Island and number ten is Kentucky <clears throat> in the categories for best states for pre-k through twelve uh, to, through twelve education the number one uh, spot is New Hampshire. Number two is New Jersey. Don't believe that. Number three is Massachusetts. Number four is Connecticut. Number five is Vermont. Number six is Iowa. Number seven is Maryland. Number eight is Minnesota. Number nine is Nebraska. And number ten, the last one, is Illinois. Illinois. We don't pronounce the S. Illinois. Okay. Read the questions. Look for the look look at the chart. Fill in the answer. Alright, so I'm gonna go through this. Not always correct, okay? So don't assume if you got this wrong that you are wrong. Let's talk about it. Okay? And um, let's if you have a different answer, let's, let's learn together. Okay? So, I'm going to tell you what I got, and we'll match it up against what you have. All right? Number one, which states on the chart have the highest public safety record? I put Vermont and New Hampshire. Number two, which statement is true? I, tro I chose all of the above. New Hampshire has the highest ranking for pre-K through 12 education. New Hampshire is the, in the top five in both public safety and pre-K through 12 education. Connecticut and Iowa are not in the top five for public safety. All right, number three. How many states are listed only once in this chart? I put number six. D. I'm sorry, I put D, number six. Okay. Six states are not listed only once. <clears throat> I mean, uh, six states are listed only once in this chart. All right. Number four. Which statement is true? I chose C. Kentucky is number 10 in public safety. All right. So those are the answers that I got. Hopefully you got the same, and if not, let's talk about it in our meetings, and in our Zoom meetings, and we can work through this together. We've had some problems with the book before, so don't just think that, oh, I got it wrong, and it's wrong. If you think you got it right, let's talk about it, because sometimes it happens that this book is wrong. B. Solve the problem. Give your opinion. Carlos and his, uh, Carlos has a wife and two young sons. He has often he has been offered a job, a great job in New Jersey. I don't believe that. He currently lives in Florida and all his family lives nearby. He wants to be able to provide his children with a good education and he wants good public safety. However, the winters are very cold and Carlos has always lived close to his family. What should he do? Okay, so now is the time when you can write down your opinion. Here's the situation with Carlos, his wife, and two young sons in his job situation. The, the, what they're asking you to do is give your advice, give your opinion. What should, remember should, high-level advice, right? 
he doesn't have to take it, but it would be it would uh, be good if he did. Okay, what should he do? All right, so take some time, write write out your opinion, and share it with us. All right, great. Let's move on. Okay, page one twenty one. Number two, grammar connections. Three uses for the present continuous. All right. There are three uses for the present continuous tense. The first one are um, events happening now. Farah is wearing new jeans right now. Okay. Present continuous is wearing. The next um, use is ongoing events. Okay, I am or I'm studying in the library this week. Okay, so this will be an ongoing event. I'm not telling you that I'm studying on Monday, I'm studying on Tuesday, I'm studying on Wednesday. I'm telling you that I'm studying the whole week. Okay, and then the last uh, use is events in the near future. All right, I don't use this as much uh, because. I like to use the future tense to talk about things that are happening in the future, but this is a use. Um, this is a use for a present continuous tense that gives us an option to use for events in the near future. Hiro isn't working next Saturday. Hiro isn't working or is not working next Saturday. Okay. And if you have the chance or the ability to scan this barcode, you can watch uh, the video that goes along with these three uses for the present continuous tense. Let's work on down the page then. Let's practice. Actually use these. Uh, use this. Work in a small group. Complete the chart. The question is, what are you doing tonight, Farah? The answer is, I'm studying English. Okay? So, if we're talking in a small group to people, let's say, Eric, all right? What are you doing tonight, Eric? I am preparing, um, I am preparing dinner. What are you doing right now, Eric? I am teaching English. What are you watching on TV this week, Eric? I'm watching uh, dramas and action. Watching. What are you doing next Saturday? Eric, I am I am fishing next Saturday. What are you thinking about right now? Eric, I'm thinking about teaching English. What classes are you taking this term? Eric, I'm not taking any classes. I'm not taking any classes this term. Okay, so now it's your turn. Find somebody who you can have in your group and ask them these questions. And you'll want to answer um, in the present continuous. All right? B, work with a partner. Look at the questions in exercise 2A. Answer the questions. Which questions are about events happening right now? Which questions are about ongoing events? Which questions are about events in the near future? So I'm going to let you figure that out based on what we've learned in the three uses of the present continuous tense. All right. If you have any questions, let me know. Good. 
So, we're at the end here, but let's do a summary. So what we've done is we've gone through Unit 9. We've talked about daily living. Specifically, we've talked about crime and community action. Remember when we started on page 110, 110, Monica's house had gotten broken into. She was talking to her friend Samantha about it. Her, uh, Monica and her husband were at the neighbor's house when the robber broke in and stole some of Monica's things. As a result, Monica and Samantha now want to start a neighborhood watch program to keep the whole neighborhood protected. Let's go over our vocabulary words that we've learned in this in this unit. Okay. Let's talk about the root word and then how we use it in continuous form. Okay? Attend attending babysit babysitting bake baking drive driving eat eating paint painting play playing study, studying, visit, visiting, work, working, watch, watching. Okay, so if you have any problems with these, let me know. Okay, unit nine, vocabulary words and phrases. These are some of the words and phrases that we learned. So, let's look at them. First phrase, broke into. Broke into. Okay, broke is the past tense of the verb break. Right. So this is a past tense phrase. Broke into. Come over. Come over. This is the present form of the verb, come, and and the root, uh, root uh, verb. So this is a present tense phrase. Crime, crime, got into, or I'm sorry, got in, got in, right? So got, <coughs> excuse me, got is the past tense of the word get, verb get. So this is a past tense phrase, got into, or got in. Usually, I'm used to saying got into, but got in is how uh, is, is what we're seeing here. Next word is mess. Mess. Next word is robbed. Robbed. So this is the past tense of uh, the verb rob, right? So this is a past tense word, robbed. Okay. Um, stole. Stole. Okay, this is the past tense of the of the verb steal. So this is a past tense word. And then the last one is worried. Worried. This is the past tense of the verb uh, the verb worry. Okay. All right. Unit 9. This is it. This is the end of Unit 9. So, next week's lesson will be Unit 10, Free Time. Alright? So, hopefully you uh, learned a lot in Unit 9. And if you have any questions, like I said, you can email me. Or you can send me a message on WhatsApp. Or we can talk about um, any questions during our Zoom meetings. Weekly Zoom meetings. Alright? All right, so until next week, I hope you um, stay safe and um, stay healthy, and we will see you next week.